Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, U Abudiwa Sos Ugobela Wemet. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. Okay, so we have question three on vertical projectile motion extracted from one of the uh, past exam papers. So I do not remember the year, but then I will uh, include it on my description. Then, okay, it says a crane is lifting bricks on a wooden pallet at a constant velocity. When the pallet reaches a height of 17.2 meters above the ground, one of the bricks falls from the pallet, and then it says ignore the effect of friction. The position versus time graph shows the motion of the brick from the moment it falls from the pallet until it strikes the ground. So we can see our position versus time here. And then my, now you might be wondering if this brick is uh, falling from the wooden pallet. Why is it that now it is rising to a, a greater position there, or it is right to a it is rising to a maximum height so the reason that is happening it's because of the law of inertia newton's first law so we know that since uh, the crane was lifting the bricks up when the bricks fall they would need to maintain that state of uniform motion in the very same direction in which the crane was being lifted so when this brick, uh, when this brick falls here it does not fall directly like that but then instead it uh it tries to follow within uh, that uh, motion that uh, it, it was in. So it goes like that. So the true trajectory is now that it will go like that, reach a certain maximum height until it falls back down. So when it reaches that maximum height, then it falls from that position. So which is why we are saying that when the brick fall, it rises to a particular uh, maximum height and then goes back and falls to the ground so that's what is happening according to uh, the law of inertia or newton first law now 3.1 says explain what is meant by the term free fall so we know with that one we just quickly look at it here so free fall we say is the motion in which an object is moving under the influence of gravitational force only where there is no air resistance so for two marks that's how you are expected to define that now you can see that always the definitions are if they do not ask you what is free fall then they will obviously have to ask you what is a projectile so when it comes to vpm just expect those two definitions then um we have three points which says write down the time taken by the brick to reach its maximum height after the falling off uh after falling off from the pallet right so now uh, we have covered the fact that uh, when this brick falls from the pallet it jumps and reaches a particular maximum height now they just want the time it takes to do that so we can see that uh, it takes about 0 0.7 seconds right so we just say for one mark they just said write down so remember with write down i said usually the answer is just on your diagram so 0 0.7 seconds and then 3.3 says calculate the velocity of the brick just before it falls off the pallet right so just before it falls off the pallet that means we are looking for the velocity at this point here so remember here we are we are just given a position versus time now all we need to do here is just collect our data we have our v initially that's uh, what we are looking for so this is before it falls from the pallet. Then our V finally, if we say it is reaching the maximum height, we know that the velocity at the maximum height is zero meters per second because we say that's where the the ball or I mean where, that's where the brick will momentarily stop. So I'm used to the ball because most of uh, the VPM questions are asking you about the ball. Then a uh, change in time, the time it takes for the brick to reach the maximum height is 0 0.7 seconds as we have covered in 3.2 and then now uh, our acceleration let's just take upward as positive because initially when this brick is uh, falling uh, the the initial direction is that it will go upward before it comes back down so i just like to uh, take my upward as positive so that means a will be negative 9.8 meter per second square right 
Now, seeing our data here, we can see that the most suitable for, uh, formula to use is the one that goes VF is equals to VI plus A and then delta T. So VF is zero. Our V initially, that's what we are looking for. But then here we have negative 9.8 and then our delta time is 0 0.7. Now at this point, you just want to uh, punch that into your calculator. And then we have our solution there as negative 6.86. And then if we are to just write our solution, that's 6.86 meter per second, right? So it is positive like that. And then, um, right, so we are done with that one. 3.4 says now calculate the distance covered by the brick during the last second of its free fall. So you have to be very careful with this question here. So it's during the last second, right? So during the last one second of its free fall. So now we are told that uh, the total time for the whole journey here is 2.7. So that means uh, just before the last second, that means the ball is somewhere around here uh, in time 1.7 so we just say 2.7 minus 1 then we'd find that the ball in the last second will would have already traveled 1.7 seconds so before it completes the last second of the free fall it would have already traveled 1.7 seconds right i hope it makes sense then uh, what am i going to do with that uh, 1.7 seconds so this is how i'm going to approach the question for 3.4 so number one is that, uh, remember, uh, this is, so 3.4, I'm going to just go ahead and say, if I'm taking this from here, the point where it is falling off from the wooden pallet, and then all the way to the point here in uh, in 1.7 seconds, a point just before it is left with one second until the final journey, then I can say my initial velocity is uh, the one that I just calculated from above. This is 6.86 meter per second. And then I'm looking for the VF, but the VF I'm looking for is not here at 2.7, but it is here at 1.7. Right. So the VF, that's what I'm looking for. Acceleration, because I've already chose upward as positive, has to be negative 9.8 meter per second square. Right. And then uh, the delta T that I'm going to use is 1.7 seconds because I'm looking for the journey just before uh, it has covered that last second. Right. Then uh, to calculate that, I will just go. So remember, this is five marks. And most of the time with the five mark question, uh, it is usually a question whereby we have to solve it using two equations. Right. Then this is VF is equals to VI plus A and then delta T. VF, uh, that's what we are looking for, but we have VI is 6.86, and then here that's negative 9.8. Then let's put 1.7 here. So our V finally is equals to negative 9.8 meter per second, right? So what is this telling us? Uh, the velocity at this point here is negative 9.8 meter per second. So the velocity uh, when the the brick is only left with one second to complete its whole journey or only left with one second until it strikes the ground is negative 9.8 meter per second now what am i going to do with that remember what i'm trying to calculate here is the distance covered by the brick during the last second so now that i found this i can just use the formula delta y is equals to vi delta t plus half and then a delta t squared but now my vf that i just found here remember it's vf because i started here and then all the way to this point but if i'm only considering this part now if i'm considering the part from a 1.7 seconds to 2.7 seconds then this here becomes the v initial so the same negative 9.8 meter per second now becomes the v initially and the velocity in which it will hit the ground now becomes the v finite but that's not what i want here i want a uh, the 
the distance right covered by the break during the last second so i will just say my v initially take it as that negative 9.8 then the time is one second because now it is only left with one second then this is negative 9.8 and then also here one second then square that now if you punch all that into your calculator you end up having negative 14.7 meters right so therefore in other words we can then say our distance is actually 14.7 meters so the distance covered in the last second by the break is 14.7 meters i hope that makes sense make sure that you just take it slow and try to understand uh, the approach that i came with here but then again to comply with our five marks you can see that we used uh, two formulas there so always have it in the back of your mind that if a question is about five six marks then it will involve you having to use two uh, equations because you first have to look for a certain variable that you do not have uh, before you can calculate the one that is required hey 3.5 says draw an acceleration versus time graph for the motion of the brake from the moment it falls from the wooden pallet until it just reaches the ground so we know when it comes to drawing an acceleration versus time graph this is the easiest graph of all the graphs that you can draw because this only involves showing whether uh the 9.8 will be below the x-axis or above the x-axis but this depends on what a uh, side you chose as a positive right so considering that we chose upward as positive then we know that our acceleration should be negative 9.8 meters per second square now if it's negative we know that in drawing our acceleration versus time graph our acceleration here the 9.8 meter per second should be a uh, drawn just below the x-axis so we will have our horizontal line below the x-axis and then we just indicate here that uh, this is negative negative 9.8 then all i'm left to do is just label here this is time in seconds and then over here i have my acceleration which is given in meter per second square right then i can just go ahead and title my graph acceleration uh, versus time right so that's all you need to indicate there for the two marks now uh note that this is when you took upward as positive but what if you take a uh, down as positive now if you take down as positive that means uh, the horizontal line will now have to be above the x-axis because remember with downward as positive your acceleration is positive 9.8 meters per second so that's the only difference between these two graphs uh, there so this would be positive 9.8 meters per second square and once again you just uh, title this is time in seconds and then over here this is acceleration and then we know it is given in meter per second square right so that's all you need to indicate but then uh, based on what we were solving here that means I would be drawing this graph remember if in your graph needs to correspond uh, to the direction that you chose as positive so make sure if you have answered this question with a uh, upward as positive then this is the correct graph that you should have drawn if you have answered it using a uh, downward as positive then this is the correct graph that you should have drawn there so that's it uh, with the lesson today please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you have found it helpful. And if you've been watching these videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.